and my wall normal. Apply them to this cube and all of them get that texture now. This is really nice and convenient. And then I can look at that cube, look down and say, no, I really want the bumped specular, which means I need to add in this wall normal. And everybody has that convenient texture now. Whatever I do, whatever I change, I've now made a wall that I can use however I want. So, this is convenient. Let's go through and delete a couple of these. And I can even delete this one. I have it saved down here inside my prefabs. I don't need that object up here. It is part of my assets now, part of the things that I can drag out. So my wall is there available for me. Okay. Other thing I need are some doors. I want things to be moving around. And I find it convenient to start off again with an empty game object. Stick in a cube underneath it. Well, actually, let's stick a wall in there. No, let's, let's not do that. I want, I want to basically do this again. Make another cube. It's at position zero, zero, zero. Make it tall again, 0 0.2. And I'm going to start animating this cube. That's what we were doing before add a curve to it, open that door, let's go to my transform, add the position in, add some rotation in, and every second it will open and then close. How could I do that? How can I make this door open and close, knowing what you know about animations and rotations? So let's add just that part in. I want to rotate it by 90 degrees. That's enough to get us started. So I could say, rotate it by 90 degrees. Then after that second is up, select it back, back to zero. So what do I got going on here? Rotate, close, rotate, close, rotate. That looks good, but it's not really how a door works. Doors aren't attached in the middle doors are attached on the corner. How can I really get it to rotate like, like a door? We've got to do movement as well, right? So what could I do to make it move? Where should it be moving as it does this? Let's give that a shot. So we were 0, 0.5, Point five, and then back to zero, zero. Let's move this wall out of the way. Oh wait, I'm animating the wall, aren't I? What have I done? No. <laughs> no.
Zero. <laughs> so that's not bad. That looks much better. Yes. Our door is rotating and unfortunately it's not it's the wall. It's, it's not the door, it's the <laughs> wall. Exactly. So door. <laughs> wall. Cube. Project. Prefab. Yes, that should have been called door. Wall. Okay, much better. So I've got walls and I've got doors that can open and close. Yeah. So if you make changes to the source object of the prefab and you change that one, it changes the prefab also. It's like when you were adding the animation to make it a door. Yes. I mean, I need to apply all those because those were bold over here. I need to make sure I apply them to that prefab to say, save it, put it into your memory. Okay, and the, the reason, one of the reasons I like to use these empty objects is because then my animation, like we were seeing, is saying specifically, here are the X, Y, Z coordinates of where you will go, but they're always relative to the parent. You're always gonna be figuring out, well, if I move this door somewhere, Oh, I had all, okay, this is not going well. I had all the wrong things selected anyway. So I needed to select the door. I need to select the cube underneath the door. Yes, this should not have an animator on it. It's the cube underneath that needs to be animated. Yeah. There we go. So otherwise it won't really open correctly. I know, I apologize. I'm clicking on the wrong things today. I will try to get this together. The cube needs to be animated. This cube needs to be animated. Go on. Try this again. Spot one. We need to have those there, but in here we had point five, negative point five. Am I animating the door again? No. Okay, this is not going well. But the point I wanted to say was if you animate I think I see what's going on. You can't animate 
at least according to what I'm seeing right now, I can't animate the under parts. I want to animate that cube. Because then, why does it say door? The cube is going to move relative to the door itself. I know, this is, this is not what I want to do today. But, okay, what I want to do next is talk about the character controller. And just for sanity's sake, let's go back to the one I made yesterday that I know has, don't save any of that, that was bad. <laughs> so, this is where I was when I was in my right mind, able to actually get this together. I was able to make some moving walls and look underneath them. It has this cube, which has the animator on it which worked correctly. And I added a light to my moving wall so that the prefab itself included the cube and the light. Wherever I dropped one, it went. But then wherever I moved my wall, the animation was underneath it and relative to that larger empty object position. That's the really thing I was trying to show you there, which did not go well. but. Eventually, get yourself to the point where you're here in the world and you can wander around. Oh, right, I was in the middle of something else. Wallmaker, turn that off for right now. Okay, today is not going well. I don't know. I don't know. We might just stop early. Come on. <laughs> so, what you can do is wander around the world. Your doors are opening and closing. Navigate yourself through. As these doors are opening and closing, they were all made with those prefabs. They're all the same prefab, just in different locations, opening and closing, moving around, doing their thing. Okay, now this part we haven't seen before. This is the character controller. Let's see what that is. It lets us actually wander around the screen. It is a prefab. It comes with Unity. And you can go to Assets, Import Path, Character Controller, and say, I want to make something run around the screen. Import the package, Character Controller, gives you under the standard assets, the Character Controller folders and the Character Controller prefab. This, you can drop into your screen. You get a little capsule that has a capsule collider on it. Let's go look at it here. It's blue, it's prefab. It comes with the graphics. It comes with a camera. That camera follows you around as you start moving around doing your things. This is also the first place we start to see scripts. The way we make our games interactive is by starting to program them. All we've been doing so far is designing sets, designing the scenes, but now we want it to react to the mouse whenever I move the mouse and do stuff with that mouse. So I want it to react to my keys that I type in, WASD and spacebar for jumping and all those things have to happen and it has to be inside a cycle. 
So Unity says these things happen all the time. It's part of a game system loop.